In this video, we're going to briefly go over what happens when we want to solve an equation that isn't factored. Well, what we're going to do first is we want to factor this equation. So to factor an equation, we're going to follow those three steps. Step one, find your see if there's a greatest common factor. If there is, factor it out. If not, then we'll move on to step two. Step two is going to be to count our terms and determine what method are we going to use. So remember, if we have two terms or it's a binomial, we are going to use the special product patterns. If it is a trinomial, we're going to use the X method. If it has four terms, then we're going to use the grouping method. And then lastly, we need to check to see if it can factor more. So let's take a look at this first one all together, and then I'll let you practice the next two. So in this first one, I want to look, is there a term I can factor out of this polynomial on the left that's in all of them? And the answer is yes, there is a W in all of those. So I can factor out one of those Ws. The next thing I want to do is count my terms. Here I have a monomial. So remember, monomials cannot factor anymore. Over here, I have a trinomial. So if I have a trinomial, I'm going to factor using my X method. So I want to multiply two numbers to get 16 and add two numbers to get negative 8. As I run through those factors of 16, what I'm going to end up getting is that those factors are going to be negative 4 and negative 4. I also can observe that right here, this happens to be a square of W times W, and this happens to be a square of 4 times 4. If both of those two things are squares, and I can do 2 times W times 4 and get this term in the middle, it actually follows one of our special product patterns. And that pattern tells me that this is actually going to break down into a W minus 4 squared. So as I simplify this, I end up actually getting this factor to be W times W minus 4 squared. So as I solve this equation, remember, when we solve, we're going to set each polynomial that we're multiplying equal to 0. So my solutions here are going to be W equals 0, W minus 4 equals 0, and W minus 4 equals 0. Now notice how these two are the same equation, so I only have to do that once. So my solutions are going to be W equals 0 and W equals 4. Now go ahead and pause the video and run through example 7 and 8 on your own. Check through those things. Is there a greatest common factor? How many terms do I have? Can I, which method am I going to use? Is everything factored out as much as it can be? If it is, then I'm going to set each of those parts equal to zero and move forward. So go ahead and pause the video when you've finished running through these examples. Unpause the video and check your work. Okay, hopefully you've had the chance to run through examples 7 and 8 here. As we run through those examples, in 7 we can see that after I factored out the 8 that was common in that first step, I had two terms, and in those two terms it was a difference of squares. So I can use that difference of squares pattern to factor it out into x times x plus 5 times x minus 5. Now all three of those terms are either monomials or have a degree of 1, so I set each of those equal to 0 and I end up with the solutions of x equals 0, x equals negative 5, and x equals 5. In 8, I factored out a c, and I ended up with a trinomial, so I use my x method to factor out, to split up those factors, and I end up getting c times c plus 3 times c plus 4, and those are all either monomials or have a degree 1, so those are the simplest they can be, and they can't factor any further, so our solutions there are c equals 0, c equals 3, and c equals 4. If you have questions on this, feel free to reach out, but this is how you would solve an equation when we're presented with a poly polynomial equal to zero.